Well, my friends, today we are in Orlando, Florida. Well, my friends, it's your old pal Jordan the Lion. I hope you're all doing well. We're gonna have a blast today. I have wanted to come to Desert Land in Orlando for quite a while, and today we're gonna do it. The guy who owns this place, apparently tons of money, big collection of fun stuff that he loves, and this is the place that he shares it with everyone. So it's a whole big like fun center, but I wanna check out mainly their car museum today. So Days with Jordan the Lion, it begins right now. Now I believe he has a massive passion for James Bond and actually has one of, if not the largest James Bond collection in the world here. Look at this place. Oh, right out front, they're winning me over right here with the hippie vans, the happy peace vans. Love that, and a tow mater. Tow mater just puts everybody in a good mood, I think. Doesn't he? I think this part of it is technically called the Orlando Auto Museum at Desertland Park. It says free admission, how can that be? Wow, take a look at this place. There's a James Bond themed sports bar with a freaking tank in the bar. Look at that. <laughs> Holy moly. This place is massive. I don't even know where to start. Holy smokes. Hey, look at that. They even have some Flintstone stuff. The Flintmobile, driven by John Goodman. Named it Freebird. He drove that thing? Sure looks like it, says it was. Even signed by George Barris underneath. And then they have all kinds of Flintstone stuff over here. I don't know if it's just made for, for the fun of the place or if it was using any of the movies, it doesn't say over here. So I'm just gonna assume they made it for kind of the ambiance of the place. Although, you never know, honestly. This stuff looks good enough to be screen accurate for those kind of movies, so highly possible. Wow, look at that. Isn't that a beauty? Woo, DeSoto. Okay, so it looks like the official entrance is right here and you do need tickets for the auto museum. Take a look at this, as soon as I walk in, you've got this car from the league. Spirit of Nemo, Sean Connery. I love stuff like this. Then look at the Bugs Bunny car, the What's Up Doc. It's got his teeth in the front, along with a big carrot. You can see him driving it. Wow, this has to be one of the coolest things I've ever seen. It's a tribute to James Dean car. It says giant, it's got a big golden bust of Jimmy, and then it's made to look like his last Porsche. Look at that, wow. The Marilyn Monroe tribute, wow. That is glorious, is it not? <laughs> Whoa, look at the Elvis car. Oh wow, that's amazing. That is incredible. And it's even got like a guitar here, built into the side, and Elvis driving with a piano dashboard, keyboard dashboard. Thunderbirds are go. And there's the pink, wow, custom car. That's amazing. I've never seen that movie. Then we know the mystery machine. All right, let's go explore one of the largest collections in the world, including world's longest limo. That's a Guinness world record. 
right there, acknowledging. Look at that sucker. <laughs> Goes all the way down there. Super limo rolled in a length of 30.54 meters, 100 feet, breaking the 86 record title. And look at this on our way down to see the limo. He's got just tons and tons of like circus vehicles. And here we've got all kinds of uh, Vespas and things like that. They actually have the door open to the limo. So I thought we should go down and check it out. Oh wow, it's even got like a pool in the back. So there's the entrance, there's the uh, captain seat, I guess, and then everybody just kind of goes down there, of course, but uh, look at that, a putting green, a hot tub. This place is so big we can't see everything, but I'll walk through some of the stuff that I'm most interested in. This is the 1920s room here with Laurel and Hardy. It says, Laurel and Hardy mainly use Model T Fords in their films. Part of the Model T's popularity on the big screen comes because the car and the medium emerged at approximately the same time. Huh, it was the best selling vehicle and everyone in Hollywood beyond wanted one. I love the way they have this place all laid out because there's so much stuff to see. Horseless carriage. This is a mock-up of the Bonnie and Clyde car, you can see. 1929. Ford Model A. The Joan of Arc machine. Welcome to the 40s. Okay. Welcome to the Cars of the Stars. All right. We've got some boats here. But let's see the cars to the stars. There's some motors for those boats. Oh, cool, it's Christine. Yeah. There were a lot of Christine, so I assume this is probably one of the screen used ones, but they, I wanna say they had like over a dozen at least. And then I believe this is the original Green Hornet. The Bruce Lee Green Hornet? Or was this the remake? We'll have to look. 1965 Chrysler Imperial Black Beauty, seen in the TV show Green Hornet. Yes, yeah, so this was the TV show one. Nice. And then this is clearly from The Grinch Who Stole Christmas, the Jim Carrey version, because they have these up here on the wall. I would assume that's why. No description, but that definitely looks like something you could have seen in the movie. All right, let's go see more of the collection. All right, we just entered the Dukes of Hazard room. I like that. We got a General Lee here. That does look like an original, an uncrashed original. You can see where it's been painted. They did a lot of rush job painting. It's got the original roof. And then there's Dixie. That's very cool to see Daisy's Jeep and then one of the Roscoe Sheriff's cars. So I've seen one of the screen used ones before at that awesome Boar's Nest Museum that guy's got in North Carolina. All right, we, we've entered what looks like the TV and movie cars. That one is, looks like it's been eaten by a dinosaur. But we have Mr. Bean's car. That's cool. 1960s Mini Cooper. I love Mr. Bean. <laughs> Mr. Bean got into the best chaotic mishaps ever. And this says this was Raiders of the Lost Ark. Indiana Jones, of course. And then I believe that is also Indiana Jones, as is this one. I'm the weirdo here. I like Indiana Jones, but my favorite's Temple of Doom. That's the one I got into as a kid the most. Oh, cool. Knight Rider, one of the kits. And then here we have, look at that, it's got a motor on the bottom of it. The Knight Rider 2000 boat car. 
And then over here we have another kit. Screen used. Look, and it's even lighting up, I love it. I also love Total Recall when it came out, and that's one of the taxis from Total Recall. Schwarzenegger. It's even got the little dummy in it that Arnold's talking to when Arnold's sitting in the back seat. There, they even have a picture of it over there. And then this is from Terminator 3, but I, honestly, I didn't see Terminator 3. I love the first two a ton, but I just, uh, I never saw them. And then these are from Mission Impossible 2. Motorcycles. And then this is from Owen Wilson, Jackie Chan, Shanghai Nights. And then if you come over here, Michael Jackson's Soul Train. They use this. Or this could have been based off of something that was in the Moonwalker. Very cool though. Doesn't have, this place doesn't have a lot of descriptions on some of the stuff. Here we have one of the Ghostbusters Ecto ones doesn't say whether it's screen used or anything so if it doesn't say so we'll assume probably not oh nice nice fantasy island so check this out this is the actual grease lightning car that we see at the end of the movie with the, the glass hood and everything and sandy and danny are in there and it says this has a complex story that the uh the vehicle is actually unknown to be anywhere for years and then it was in the hands of a private collector they found out and then some people wanted to restore it so they sent it um, from new york to california to be restored where one of the original creators of the car worked on it trying to give it a new lease on life but halfway through the build the person in charge of the restoration died leaving the car unused and unloved for many years and then Michael Dezer bought it and finished the restoration and has it on display here now. And we just lost Olivia Newton-John, so, so sad, but so cool to see one of her most memorable movie cars right here on display, Orlando. And here we have Inspector Gadget's car. <laughs> That's really cool, honestly. I like the way they built this and the insides and everything. And as a kid, I loved Inspector Gadget, so that's really cool. And then right behind us, Mr. T's A-Team van. Not screen used, I know that. Those are hard to find. I don't think even, I mean, there's like one left out of all the ones they used. And then over here, we have, of course, the monkey's car. I don't believe this is the original either, but it's a great reproduction. And then that is from the Saint. And then over here, they have some monster stuff. They have the Dragula made out of the coffin. And then over there is the coach. See, they have their own monsters coach over here. I'm not exactly sure where the original is. Um, says, oh, maybe this is the original. It looks like it could be because the, uh, the little placard says, this is the 1923 Ford M Delta based hot rod special. Constructed and designed by the well-known movie car builder George Bears for the famous TV 60s series, The Munsters. It features a massive Ford Cobra engine. It has Jan's high dome, uh, some of the pistons, and some of the words have like flaked off there, so that's why I'm having trouble reading it. Anyway, it says in the 70s, the car toured the US extensively and was given a new makeover by its creator, which it still displays today. So this actually is the, the real one, it says. But you can definitely tell people have messed with it. There's stickers put on it that probably former owners when they were displaying it, promoting stuff. Really cool to see though. I love the Munsters. And then here's Herbie. Herbie the love bug. Or Herbie fully loaded. And then it says this is from Chitty Chitty Bang Bang. I don't remember this one. I remember the other crazy cars, but this is the actual TV series car from Starsky and Hutch. Probably one of the most famous cars and rare cars in the world, it says. Then clearly here we have 
Mini Me and the James Dean Porsche. Wait, I'm really confused. I was wondering, I'm like, this doesn't look like the same body sound. Then I'm reading it, it says the 1968 Porsche Spider. So this looks like this was done in like a tribute to Jimmy. And then, wow, look at that. Big, beautiful, purple Dick Tracy vehicle. You can see they have it displayed right there. It says Madonna Breathless. Breathless Speedster. Also says on there, Ferris Custom. This is the authentic car filmed with Madonna in Dick Tracy. That's what that says down there. And then this is one of the actual Ferraris that Magnum drove around, Tom Selleck. Also love that show. My grandmother had a Tom Selleck Magnum beach towel. <laughs> Speed Racer, that's great. And then we have a Miami Vice vehicle here. This is not the A car. The A car is at the Peterson Automotive Museum, but this is one of the Back to the Future DeLorean time machines. Talking about how it made DeLorean company very popular. And then here's Taxi from Curious Case of Benjamin Buttons, it says says out here on the door, passenger was Brad Pitt. And then the RoboCop 3 cop car. And I believe this was also, yeah, this was RoboCop also, it says. Probably the remake. I'm really loving this place. We're not even part of the way through it. I think I might have to divide it up into multiple videos. It just came from that room. And now we're in another Hollywood Cars. It says The Great Race. Hannibal. You see they have a, like a dummy of Hannibal in there, but they have him right there. Professor Fate's car. New York to Paris. It says Tony Curtis, Jack Lemmon, and Natalie Wood starred in The Great Race. Professor Fate's car. That's very cool. And then look back here. <laughs> They have all of Professor Fate's stuff, too. That is super cool, man. Wow, what, a, what an addition to a collection. Super unique and super cool. That's just amazing. Very, very, very unique. And I love the way they've laid it out. They've done a great job here. So far, I can't say enough great things about this place. I think probably the only thing I wish they did is on some of the stuff just kind of have a placard telling a little bit more about it because I just kind of assume if there's no placard it's not an original but you never know. People always get mad I don't show the Fast and Furious stuff because it's so popular but I was just not into it. But here is something from Fast and the Furious so make you guys happy. And then also this is from Fast and the Furious it says. And then, looks like this also, as far as I can see. But the last one over here says that it is the Mad Max Police Interceptor car. The actual one from the movie. Highly modified Australian built Ford Falcon. They used for Mel Gibson, Tina Turner, and Mad Max. Vernon Wells, it's an amazing movie and a very cool car. Look, they have kind of a Zoltar, but it's an Elvis fortune teller. They have so many rooms, there's just no way I'm going to see it all today. Or, I mean, I'm not going to film it all. That's, that's insanity. I want you guys to come check it out for yourself. But they have Bentley rooms, they have Rolls Royce rooms, and they're all themed out. But we're going to go in the Great Gatsby room right here. I want to see what this is all about. Because they also rent this place out for like events and stuff, so you'll see seating set up and everything. Old Cadillac, the Humphrey Bogart <laughs> mannequin right there beside it. Nineteen twenty-nine Cadillac LaSalle. Look at all these beautiful old cars in here. Looks like all Cadillacs. That I've never actually heard of, the Graham. It's called the 1940 Graham Hollywood model, 109. As we walk back here, I just, like I said, I love the way that they've 
displayed a lot of these cars. And then back here, like I said, they have different places you can rent out for events and stuff, so they have it set up for dining. Oh man, there's so much stuff to see. There's the England room, and that just keeps going on and on and on. Here's the Chrysler Lounge. I gotta go in there for my grandpa. Oh, he'll be so happy. Look at that, there's a Chrysler Imperial. He had a famous Chrysler Imperial that we've talked about in the family for years. Didn't look like that. <laughs> I can assure you that. Neither did this one. They probably quit making the Chrysler Imperials after the one my grandpa had. No offense, Chrysler, but... These are really cool. Yeah, it looks like a lot of these are Chrysler Imperials. That is. Same with this one. Yeah, I'm not seeing a one of them in here that looks like what he had. All right, let's wander around a little bit more. I'm definitely gonna save the James Bond Museum for another video. It's a very cool hot rod. Flower power, baby. And I guess they put this over here in case you wanna take a photo with a Ferrari. Now we are gonna move over into the Batman room. That looks like that will be fun. Right out front, before you even walk in, this is from The Dark Knight, and it says that the passenger, they wrote it right on the door, was the Joker in this scene. And they even wrote Dark Knight across the windshield. Now we're going to go on in, see all kinds of Batman-related stuff. Ooh, nice. I was actually a fan. I really did enjoy the uh, the body style. When they came back out, a lot of times you just want them to like go with the same type of car, like the original, because the original Batman car from the TV show right here was so iconic. And you're like, why would you mess with that? Why would you change that? But then when they came out with the series or the, the um, series of movies, I guess you'd say, I, I consider it like kind of like one, two, three, I really enjoyed the look of the cars that they designed. And look over here, you can even see, this is the, the back end of this, but how much this one lights up with the huge fin on it. That one's from Batman Returns. They have a rope here, so I can't really get in front of it or anything to show you, but you can get an idea of it from this. And then the whole room is just loaded. That's the, it's a replica of the original. Over here, they have one of the boats. But what's cool is this says that this was driven by Adam West and Burt Ward in Batman 1966. And they even created a, like a, cave for it to come out of with Catwoman up there fishing. <sighs> wow. It says on here this is the original. Or one of. I thought they only had one, but I thought the, uh, the museum in Pigeon Forge claimed they had the original. Wow. It's pretty amazing. You can see That mobile was created by George Barris, of course, from a 1955 Lincoln Futurama. And there's one of the bat cycles. It says only four bat cycles were ever built. The original one was the only one ever used in the filming. The other three traveled the show circuit. Only two exist today. And then over here we have a, another Looks like it's probably a replica, because there's no sign or anything for it. They have another bat cycle over here, and they're saying that 
This one was ridden by Burt Ward and Adam West also. This is really cool. They kind of built like this is supposed to be Cuba. You go in, there's a little bit of like Cuban automobiles and stuff in there. And then if you go a little further, it's Welcome to New York City. You have a subway and you have the Statue of Liberty and all that stuff. And you can go on the subway, which I think we should do. Check it out. It looks like it's just a basically an eatery kind of thing, which I like. It's pretty cool. Now this section is all Americana. Some absolutely beautiful cars. I wish they could turn the music down a little bit. They got like hip hop music blasting. It's not really, <laughs> not really what I think of when I think of going checking out classic cars. Old Packard Caribbean. That's pretty cool. All kinds of stuff in here, wow. Boy, this guy's a hell of a collector, isn't he? He's got a little bit of everything. He's got motorcycles, he's got foreign cars, he's got everything you can think of. Frank and Sammy, baby. Here they've got a general store. <laughs> it looks like we're coming up on the post office and the military pavilion. Yep, there's the post office. Wow. This guy's collection knows no bounds. Okay, here's the military pavilion, but I'm gonna be honest, I don't really, I don't know much about any of this stuff, so I don't have anything to tell you or add or explain. I mean, I like seeing the old cars and everything, don't get me wrong, but unless, you know, this is one that Elvis was riding in. I have no real frame of reference for it. Say the word over there. Now they have a whole fun world here too. This is all like racetracks that kids can ride on and they've got carousels and they've got bowling alleys and all kinds of stuff. They've also got Alfred E. Newman. No joke, I can't tell you why, but I just, for me, one of my favorite pop culture icons one of those things I just, I've always loved Mad Magazine and Alfred E. Newman. What me worry. I love it. The steering wheel has the hands already built onto it and his head busting out of the roof. I love it. Alfred, you can do no wrong in my book. Well, my friends, we're going to call it a day. I hope you all enjoyed today's vlog. I had a blast. And we will pick up where we left off in the next vlog. We'll go see the James Bond Museum and everything else that was around the perimeter here. But until then, have a great night. If you're new here, please subscribe, please hit the like button, and please ring the bell for notifications. We'll see you all next time. Have a great night. Well, be worried. Goodbye.